Here's the van in the middle of an oil change and bypass oil filter installation. What should have been an easy one day project is going into a second week. Now Fran's filters are not the problem. These E-series power stroke vans are just different from their F-series counterparts and that's why I started this YouTube channel. So if you're wondering about putting a bypass filter on your 7.3, stick around and I'll show you the problems you might face and what you need to do to deal with them so that you can install a bypass filter quickly and easily on your van. Today I'm going to be doing an oil change and bypass filter installation on my Ford E350 7.3 Power Stroke. This engine uses a Huey system, that's hydraulic electronic unit injection, and that's a system that uses this high pressure oil pump to drive oil into the fuel injectors and it creates like 21,000 PSI for fuel injection pressure. That's why the injectors are so huge and that's also why the engine oil is so important on these engines. I'm going to upgrade to full synthetic Shell Rotella T6 and I'm doing a premium Wix filter. Filtration is super important to try to get whatever gunk we can out of that motor oil. I'm also going to be installing a drain valve uh, on the oil plug. This will let me pull samples so that I can do oil testing at intervals and see if I can extend my oil change interval. Because the engine's got 300,000 miles on it and I don't know what the maintenance history is, I'm going to be adding Hotshot Secret Stiction Eliminator. Uh, when you have that high pressure oil and high temperature in the engine, we can get this sticky friction stiction on the injectors. And this uh, stuff, you add two quarts of it to your oil and it should clean things up and then it creates a, a film, fills in all the little grooves and gaps and scratches with boron and helps us to uh, reduce wear and hopefully keep that engine happy. I'm also going to be adding an oil bypass filter. So this is a secondary filter. The main oil filter is going to stay in place and then this is going to sit off the side of the engine and it's going to take a smaller amount of oil and filter it at a really low micron count, like 2 micron, whereas we're at like 20 micron on the full flow filter over here. So it's going to be constantly filtering a small portion of the oil and hopefully that will help us keep cleaner oil, uh, maintain a little bit better working conditions for the engine, and possibly extend our oil change interval because this T6 isn't cheap. To do that, I'm going to need, on this 7.3, I'm going to need a 5 16 square drive. Now you can grind down a piece of metal stock. Uh, for me, it was just easier to pick up a socket that fits. So uh, you can find these. I'll drop a link in the comments. So let's fire her up, warm up, and drain the uh, old oil. Got things nice and warm, so it's time to drain the oil. Looks like we're gonna need the breaker bar. Getting pretty full. And looks like we're gonna be all right. While that oil finishes draining, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old oil filter. That was easier than I expected. Oh, I guess I'll go ahead and get messy. I ran out of nitrile gloves on my last project, so I've got more on the way, but I don't have them here yet. Did not want to do that. That oil is black. I mean, it feels a little gritty between my fingers. Well, I guess I'll go get cleaned up. Here's our new oil drain valve from Industrial Tech Supply. Uh, this should be a pretty simple installation. It comes with its own washer. It should just be a screw in and tighten. It says to only tighten using this square body of the valve, so we'll use a wrench on that. And it said that the lever can be a little sticky, so I've, I've worked that a couple times, and now it's, uh, it's pretty smooth. You just push this up and over, and that opens that valve so we can take an oil sample. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. And then we have this little plastic protector that can clip on there to keep uh, the lever shut. So 
And here we've got that protector cap on, so we won't have any accidental oil spills. I'm gonna go ahead and thread this new drain valve in now that we've got almost all the oil out. And just to make sure we get everything out, I'm gonna go ahead and open this valve and let whatever extras drain. So to be careful not to over tighten. So we'll just go good and snug. We'll check it for leaks once I get it refilled. Here's the old oil. It's really dark, black, kind of gritty. Previous owner said he had about 2,000 miles on the oil change, and then I have driven it about 1,700 since. So this is coming up on 3,000 miles. These bypass filters make some outlandish claims about oil change intervals and oil being golden after five, ten thousand miles. I'm just hoping that with testing it's good to continue using for a little bit more than five thousand. So the Franz bypass filter came with the filter housing and filter media. There's a bracket to mount it on and a few fittings and nuts and bolts. Now they included these mounting screws that really aren't going to work on my frame, so I'm going to use these bolts, uh, 5 16 bolts that I picked up at the hardware store. Uh, they also include some hoses, some extra O-rings for changes, and some wire loom to protect those hoses. Now I read the installation instructions for the Franz filter, and they included a photo for the 7.3. That photo shows a supply port on the left side of the oil filter housing, and a return port on the engine block just to the right. Here's my old oil filter and oil filter housing. Now I thought I had those same ports, but it turns out that this port on the left is in fact just a mounting bolt, and then the port to the right is the oil return for the bypass filter. I don't have that supply port on the housing. Just mounting bolts and a coolant drain, aside from the block heater. I talked with the folks at France Filters, and they don't have an adapter currently that fits the 7.3. So I bought this sandwich adapter plate from GlowShift. It has some additional ports if I wanted to run gauges, and it'll allow me to screw in a 1/8 NPT supply line for the Franz filter. This is just gonna sit between my conventional full flow filter and the oil filter housing, and allow me to supply oil to the new bypass filter, even though I don't have a pressure supply port on my oil filter housing. This one's an odd size. Uh, it's smaller than half, bigger than quarter, so I can't really use a regular socket driver. Looks like it's about 5 sixteenths. So I'm going to remove this plug. Got my 5 sixteenths pipe drain plug on a, a long extendo, and that's popping right out. Nice. Now this will be the oil return port to the engine block for the bypass filter. And it's gonna use a 3 8 bushing with a 1 8 insert that's included in the Fran 7.3 kit. There's no room in the engine compartment or next to the conventional full flow filter for the bypass filter. So I'm gonna mount it on the outside of the frame and I'm gonna to have to drill a hole. So I'm playing with positioning here for the bypass filter. And I think this is the best spot right here. Driver's side, outside of the frame. Got my spot chosen for the bypass oil filter. It'll sit just like so under the driver's side on the outside of the frame right behind the wheel. And I just need to drill one more hole. I was able to reuse this hole already existing on the frame, but I'm going to need to put a 5 16 hole here for a bolt. And of course I can't quite get the angle. I ended up just over drilling the hole slightly at an angle and it worked out just fine. So I got my hole drilled after a couple of false starts. It's tough drilling on an angle, but that's okay, I'll just touch all that up. Alright, bypass bracket is mounted to the frame. While I'm waiting on that glow shift adapter plate, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of the bypass filter installation. So we'll start with this return. So the kit comes with this 3 8 bushing. That's gonna screw in there. And that's going to let me put a 1 8 NPT 
port in that oil return drain. I'm going to use a little bit of this sealer that they included on those threads, so I'm going to take this apart, tidy it up, and then screw it in. So fitting that bushing together, this uh, 1 8 NPT, a 7 8 16 socket fits over that head. And just hold this other one with a wrench. Get that nice and tight. So there's our oil return port all threaded and sealed. We need to get the ports threaded up on the filter body itself. There's an outlet and an inlet, and they include these 45s and 90s. I think I'm going to use two of the 45s, because lining it up, it seems like that's going to give me my best angle with these both facing back. So I'm going to thread those up. there you have it. Hooking up these hoses is pretty simple. I just pre-thread this clamp on. This is going to press on just like so. And then I'm going to tighten that hose clamp down to the 932nd socket. I've got the bypass filter mounted and almost done. You can see here looking from the rear, I've got it mounted on the frame. I've got hoses attached to the inlet and outlet. Those hoses route up along the frame through their wire loom and over here. And we've got the outlet tied into the engine block and the inlet is just hanging loose. I'm going to attach that to the sandwich plate adapter when it arrives. Well, I got the glow shift adapter plate. So I'm fitting this glow shift adapter plate in here and it looks like it's going to go right on. No problems. So I'm just gonna take it up and plug up the ports, and get it all set. I already lubed up this gasket with a little bit of clean oil. We should take 15 quarts of oil and the Franz bypass filter is going to add about a quart or two, so we'll start with 15, see how we do. That's 14 quarts of oil. I ended up adding 
14 quarts of oil and 2 quarts of Hotshot Secret Stiction Eliminator, and that ended up being just about right. There we go, starting it up. It died after a few seconds. I think it was just air in the lines, because it started up again and ran just fine after that. Just ran the engine for a couple of minutes. No leaks. Things seem to be good. This filter housing is warming up a little bit, so I know it's getting some engine oil. I think we're in good shape. Well, there you have it. Bypass filter installation is done. I just checked the oil and we're right where we need to be. That sandwich adapter plate from Glowshift seems to work great. It was an easy installation, so I'm pretty happy about that. The bypass filter is definitely filtering. It's uh, warmed up completely. The engine is running a little rough when it's cold, and I don't know whether that's a sticky injector or glow plug issue, so we'll see if that Stiction Eliminator from Hotshot Secret clears it up. If not, probably need new glow plugs down the line. And yeah, we'll see what happens. I don't, uh, I don't blame Franz for the issue with installation instructions. These 7.3s are not all the same. The vans are built differently, and I had one vendor tell me that the vans are kind of a hodgepodge, and you can get any number of different parts on them. So if you're going to install a bypass filter, check out your van first and make sure you have the right ports. If not, you may need one of those sandwich plate adapters. Anyway, I'll do a follow-up in a couple of weeks, see how that Stiction Eliminator does, and I'll be sending my oil out for testing, and I'll let you know how that goes as well. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned.